Okay, so I'm switched over here now to a uh, different piece of software, and as all things tech, they typically <laughs> fail on us. So first and foremost, thank you very much for coming out here today. My name is Fred Abley, aka Mr. Fred from GetMeCoding.com, as you mostly, well, most of you probably know. And what I asked, um, what I'm asking you of or what I'm asking of you today is to sit tight with me for a few minutes and I want to share some advice that I typically share with parents when I speak in front of orientation groups, um, church groups, schools, and so on. And you're going to have um, four takeaways from today's talk. Now, I'm also going to be able to provide these takeaways for you or to you uh, at the getmecoding.com website. And if you go to the blog section, you can go out and download these. Also in there is a little bit of bonus material. And that bonus material uh, is in regards to the internships that your son or daughter may have to also complete while they are uh, pursuing their college career. So take a look at those. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at fred, uh, fred at getmecoding.com. And I'll be glad to answer any questions or provide whatever advice I, I can. So let's get started with this. Um, really, the goal of this talk is to um, help parents weather what's coming up in the fall semester, which is about to start in a few weeks. And that's really, um, as a professor and, and having taught for many years, this time of the year is, is so important to all of us that we, re we relax and we rest. But more importantly, your son or your daughter that's heading off to college in a few short weeks is probably enjoying the summer. So all is good. But uh, very soon, they're going to start getting really nervous. Now, whether they're going to be a commuter student or they're going to actually move off to the college, this advice applies to you and your household. So there are four simple takeaway tips that you can actually do right now. A lot of times when I give this talk, it's given um, earlier in the summer and it you have a little bit of lead time to make some of these things um, effective, but I, I still think you have plenty of time to take these on. So one thing that's clear, you have to realize that they are um, moving through this, I guess, tunnel, and they're heading towards a big transition. Now, all last year, while they were trying to figure out what school to go to and what their major was going to be, it was probably really stressful around the dinner table. And that being said, um, it got real stressful, really, 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 really stressful. The other thing that also happens is right around February timeframe, and this is nothing against schools, but right around the February timeframe, they start to go into this dormant mode. They've already probably applied to their, well, they've already applied to their schools. Um, they may already have even a major in their mind, but they're, they're already moving past senior year and they go into a lull. So that's why this first tip I think is probably one of the most important tips um, right now that you want to really, really embrace. And that's a simple one. It's actually go out and get them a book. Now that might sound odd. No, I don't mean a, a marketing book or an accounting book or a textbook or, or any kind like that. Um, I think that you can go out there and buy them a book that they're going to be interested in. Now, what, you, what do you do with that book? It's really, really simple. Take the book, right? Um, open it up. I have a book right here. So you take the book, you know, open it up. And on the inside, jot down a simple message. Um, we wish you the best of luck in college. Love, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, whatever it may be. Real simple message. Take something, mark that so they know that there's something in there, or put a bookmark there, and just simply leave the book on their bed. You don't have to hand it to them. You don't have to make a big deal about it. Let them go ahead and discover it, because that'll help them, um, you know, explore it on their own. Now, why is that important? Well, like I said, since last February, they go into this really, really dormant state. And what is coming, undoubtedly, is reading. So if you think about it, I'm up here in the Northeast, and you know, if you have your car parked outside and it's a really, really cold night or a really, really cold week, when you go out there and you start that engine, it's going to really work hard to get warmed up. And then once you start driving it, it's really, really sluggish. So you want to, it has to get warmed up. The same thing holds true here. So I, I share that. Now, also with these four tips, I have no doubt in my mind that many parents, if you're listening to this on replay or you're popping in and out here today, you're saying, well, yeah, I already went to college. And, and you, people kind of chuckle about it and they say, well, I skipped class. I didn't do this and I didn't do that. All I could say is that I wish I, I know, I wish I knew, know now what I could have known then. Um, because 
it, it was one of those things where I, did I say that right? Um, the, one of those things where it has changed and I wish I did more of these things because ultimately I would have gotten better grades. I probably would have had a stronger resume and then I may have been able to apply to different kinds of jobs. So even though we, we say all oh, college is just kind of going off and having a big social life and this and that, and I know there's a great Tom Petty quote out there that talks about that. But I think what you really have to understand is that reading is a really, really important step. No matter if it's a marketing class, a cybersecurity class, or, or it's something else. The reading is really, really important because everything can't be learned through YouTube. And there's also a discipline that goes along with reading and learning how to focus. So um, that book, make it a book on a subject that they like, whether it's Star Wars, if it was for me, it'd be Star Wars, um, Star Wars or somebody's autobiography or a musician that they, they like, buy that book and then let them go out there and ultimately, you know, enjoy that and let them read a little bit. They don't have to read the whole thing and ultimately, um, you know, sit down for hours at end, but it allows that motor that's frozen to start to open back up again. So that's a, that's an important, that's my first tip. Go out on Amazon after this is done, buy that book, have it shipped in a couple days, write the inscription on the cover, leave it on their bed. Okay. So what's the next step? So the next step or the next tip is um, ultimately breathe, right? Breathe and let go. I can't tell you um, how important that is at, at this stage. Now, I could share with you a lot of stories about what I've witnessed in recent years in the uh, university setting, and that is an increase of parents being involved. Um, over the years, I don't know, I'm not really sure what's changed, but these students are now more connected than ever before with their parents, as opposed to us who might have went off and traveled to colleges and we maybe called once a week um, on the phone that was wired to the wall. These students are actually always engaged and we typically put parents into three categories. We have helicopter parents, umbrella parents, and the one that I fear the most is known as the lawnmower parent. So they are the people that are always engaged. And one of the things you should be aware of is that your um, son or daughter has to provide the okay for a parent to ask about grades. It falls into the same category um, like we have in the medical field. We have HIPAA. Well, in the educational area, we have FERPA. So we are not always allowed to have these conversations with parents unless they've been given, you know, um, approval to do that. But more importantly, let go. Like the Disney Frozen sound or movie says, let go and, and let them get involved and, and take a step back at this point. You've done a fantastic job. There's no doubt about it in my mind that you've done everything you've done. Well, they've made a great decision, right, to go to college. And that's a big decision. But more importantly now, take that step back. And that's probably going to be your hardest thing. Um, one story I could easily share with you is a, um, a phone call. I, I receive a lot of phone calls from parents asking about grades, but I could tell you a story of a, of a young man who once came to me for scheduling advice. He was about 25, 26 years old at the time. And I said, sure, we'll set up that appointment. When, the day, when that day came for the appointment, who was there but him and his mom? Um, and that's fine. But at 26 years old, I don't know if he was really engaging it and owning it. She had the, the approval form and we went on our way. Lo and behold, that student dropped out um, a year later. And from what I understand from the last Facebook post, I saw him post. He was in this basement of his house playing his Xbox at 29 and he was happy. Well, I guess that's all that matters in these days. But anyway, try to let go, breathe. It's something new. And technically they're an adult, even though they may not act like it. Were you any different at that age? And somebody, everybody always says, yes, I was. But really, I think we just got to let it go. So that's number two. So buy a book and also let go. But number three is something I really, really think that you could really work on. And this is going to start to happen now in the fall. When the fall starts, so how does this fall semester really go about? The first two weeks of classes are going to be almost like bliss. It's a lot of activities. Campuses are really, really fun. They're active. It's still warm if you're in the Northeast. And, and they go into this nice little lull. But by mid-October, um, you know, they're going to be acquiring, uh, they're going to be completing assessments. Um, they're going to be completing quizzes and maybe their first exam and so on. And you may notice that if they're, if they're coming home on weekends more or if they're commuter students that they avoid you, you might want to start having some conversations with them. But what you want to do is stop the quizzing. Just stop it. You know, all those conversations you had in, in the senior year where you're saying, did you decide on your school? Did you decide on your major? Did you decide on this, that, and the other thing? And you got real stressed off and you got very tense. You want to stop the quizzing. You want to be smart, right? As a parent, you could just take a step back and, and ask 
different kinds of inquisitive questions. So you can have an engaging conversation with your son or your daughter just by saying, well, I know you're taking a biology class. What's that like? Or I never took an accounting class. Is it really boring? You know, you can talk to them like that, but don't be hammering on them because guess what? We are on the other side, right? So they're getting it from us and they're getting that a lot of times digitally through alerts and messages, you know, take the quiz. There's a quiz next week. There's an exam coming. They get it. They're in that environment. So the quizzing from your side isn't helping them. It's actually moving them further away. And I, how do I know that? Well, I've talked to a lot of students over the years, a lot of freshman students, and that's what they'll tell me in the meetings. They'll be saying, you know, my parents are on me about this and that. And, that, and being on them is important. But I think at this point in time, there is a process and there's a system that if you trust it, it's going to work out okay for you. So um, so I say hi, John, and hi, hi Ivan, how you doing? And Steve, thanks for popping in, everybody. Um, please share this out with anybody that you think is a parent um, who, who might find this useful. Um, so... I, you know, I think this is good tips that everybody should, should hear. So now, um, going back now, that fall semester, that fall term, a red flag should go up if you have a conversation with your son or your daughter and they don't know the professor's name. Now, remember, the professor is controlling that environment for 15 weeks. If there's going to be a problem, that's going to be the first person you go to. You're going to want to make sure that they kind of reach out to them. Now, one of the things that I always tell students is don't come up before class. How about we meet after class? Because usually it's a rush to get to the front of the class and you're trying to get the, the talk going or the exercise going. But afterwards, professors are always available. And if they're not, you could always go and talk to another professor that maybe you are clicking with. And that's, that's normal. That's life, right? I mean, sometimes professors might seem cold and, and you know, unapproachable. Um, I try not to be that way, and I know a lot of my peers uh, aren't that way either. So kind of keep those things in mind. But if they don't know that professor's name, now when they come to me as an advisor, so students will come to me and I'll meet with them and we'll talk about things. And the student will say, I want to drop my math class. And I'm like, okay, um, let's talk about this a little bit. What's going on? Well, I don't understand anything that's going on. I, I'm falling behind in the assignments. My first question is always, did you go talk to the professor? And they'll say no. And then, so I know a lot of the math professors, I'll simply ask them, I'll say, which math professor are we talking about? And the student will look at me and they'll say, mm, I, I don't know the name. And at that point, I'm like, if you don't know the name of the professor and you're struggling in this class, we got to take some action real quick. But that's the attitude that sometimes starts to emerge in the freshman year of college. They're just moving through it. And that is sometimes, regardless of the school, the high school that they came from, like I said, from February on until almost the end of August or September, that's a downward activity trend because they're already in that mode. And, and all of a sudden now they're just continuing to be in that mode. So you want to help them out. You want to make sure that um, they know their professor's name. But if that flag goes up, what do you do at that point? You want to just say, hey, did you think about talking to your professor? What shouldn't happen, though, as a parent, you shouldn't be making the call, okay? It should be on them because that's another very, very important tip. So the stopping the quizzing and so on, that's going to take me to my probably my fourth and most important tip that I wish I had a better understanding of as an undergraduate in the 1980s. And that's known as just getting involved or in higher education, we call it engagement. Now, what does that mean? So if you were an athlete in high school or you were in student government in high school or you were just active in high school, making the transition into college is kind of kind of feel okay. You're going to immediately connect with people. You're going to immediately uh, create a little community and you're going to move through your coursework. So you're going to be okay. But what about those students that haven't done a lot of that in high school? And oddly, well, and unfortunately, that's a majority of the students. Those other students I just cited, that's the minority. So we have all these other students coming along. So what is this engagement thing? Um, if you read the blog post, I tell a really uh, interesting story. I do this exercise every fall term with my freshmen, and this is how it goes. I walk into the classroom, and I have a neat conversation with them where I say this. What was the most expensive thing that you bought this past summer? And I'll walk around the classroom, and I'll get all these hands raising and earth like that, and they'll be like, oh, I bought, I bought new sneakers. Well, okay. <laughs> I bought a new uh, game console. That could be expensive. Buy a guitar, you know. Then I'll get that one. And every year I always get one. I bought a car and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. So um, I jump right on that. I say, so you're driving down Main Avenue in your hometown and there's this really nice car in the parking lot. You drive in, you have a lot of cash in your pocket. You say, here's my money. He gives you the key. You hop in the car and you drive away. 
And the student will always look at me and they'll be like, no, I didn't do that. I said, so what do, what do you do? He goes, well, I went on Carfax and I researched it and I went out to these other, uh, other lots and I test drove it. And, you know, I looked around, I shopped around. Oh, okay. So how much did you pay for that car? And usually they'll say it's like $4,500 or $5,000, something like that. And that's a lot of money, right? And then I'll look at them and I'll say one more thing. I say, so how much is this class? No idea. Hmm. You don't know how much this class costs, but you spent all that time, you know, looking for a car. And, and, and then I'll be like, well, do you realize that when all is said and done after these four years, you may come out of this experience maybe close to $200,000 in debt. And you don't know what you're buying right now. All right. So then I'll ask him, um, well, here's an easier question. What's the name of my class? No idea. Oh, it's uh, uh, it's computer something. Okay. All right. And then I always throw this one in just to be, you know, to kind of make it lighthearted. I say, okay, well, then what's my name? Because I'm going to control your life for 15 weeks. And they'll be like, uh, Mr. Fred? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, okay, that's that's good. So, you know, it's, it's all about engagement and owning the process. And if you're a parent and you're going to always be popping in on them, they're never going to own it. They're never going to think they have to own it. When, what will happen? Here's what happens. They're going to hit a wall. They're always going to hit a wall. If they're in the sciences, they're going to hit some rigor. If they're in the liberal arts, they're going to hit some rigor. So what does that mean? They're going to hit challenging courses. They're going to be touching on material that they've never seen in high school. No matter how great that high school was, they didn't see it. They're not going to be able to learn it all on YouTube or Udemy or Udacity. They're going to be in an environment that's going to challenge them. And if they're not owning it and they're, they're not feeling like they have to do their best, they're going to back off from it. They're going to jump majors. And that's something I always tell parents, be ready for this. Yeah, if your son or daughter is going into college and they have their major in mind, the percentage that actually keep their major on day one is incredibly low. It's less than 15% right now. They change. So, you know, when they meet these classes, they, they don't know really what they're shopping around for. They, or they didn't shop around for it. Maybe you told them that they need to major in this because that's where the jobs are. And they could be, but I think you have to let them explore that. And that's the other thing, too, with engagement. Engagement is a really, really fun thing. It means getting involved. It means finding a club. Like, so I'm a geek. Um, I, my students are geeks, and I say that in a very kind and affectionate way. They get together, and when they get together in their club and they talk about video games or computers or whatever, they're creating their community so that when they do hit those classes and they struggle, They'll be like, hey, did you take Abley's test? Abley's test was a tough thing. How did, yeah, I did it. I, I was okay with it. Well, what did you do? How did you study for that? So that's what happens. You know, that, that community supports each other. So that's why engagement's really key. And actually, when you look at your tuition bill, not only are you paying for the professor and the learning space and the class, you're also paying for all this other stuff that's around it. And if you fully engage other activities along with your coursework, you immediately raise your success rate for academic success. And then ultimately, you're also doing probably the most important thing in my mind, and that's building your resume. So you get involved with a club. You work on a project outside of class. That's going on your resume. You know, everybody, I, so I could speak from the coding standpoint. Do you realize that, you know, MIT's Computer Science 101 is the same computer science curriculum as your community college? Same exact thing. But what's happening outside of the classroom or what is that professor involved with that you want your son or daughter to get involved with in terms of research or a project? That's where the difference starts to be made. But even then, if they don't at MIT get involved in stuff like that, really, MIT that degree is wonderful. It's awesome. It's fantastic. But the thing is, you still got to build out that resume. And that resume ultimately has to tell a story. It can't just be, I took computer science 101, marketing 301, accounting 201, employers don't care. I mean, they want to know what are you going to do for them or what did you learn? And that comes from engagement and having these uh, activities. So depending upon your university or college that you choose, you may find out that they have systems in place now. And some of them are getting pretty savvy with these. So every student will have an ID badge. They already, you know, they, that's, that's been a long time. Everybody has ID badges. But now when you go to certain events, you'll see these swipes or maybe they do smart stuff with their phones and they log. So if you go see a guest speaker or you go to do a project in the, a project breakout space, they're tracking you. So now why they're not really tracking you, they're helping you. So what it does is it logs it into your profile. Then you could download that and then you pick out what you want to put onto your resume and that's building your resume and that's what's helping you tell the story. So that's really, 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 really important. So engagement is, is really key. And I, I've had so many stories over the years with students wanting to get engaged and, you know, trying to, uh, 
um, you know, be involved at all kinds of levels. And I think the only thing you have to watch out for that is it doesn't become too, too overwhelming. So they're, um, your student, your son or your daughter, what if they're the type of person that sat on the couch and there's permanent dimples in the couch now or they're you know, constantly Xboxing and stuff like that and they never got engaged? What do you do then? Your role right now as they approach their freshman year is a pinball machine, right? Bing, 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 bing. You know, I, I'm, I'm assuming that anybody that's going to be listening to this, hey, Matt, how are you? Um, you're, if you're watching this, a pinball machine, right? The silver ball, you have to make sure it didn't go down that hole. Well, you're the bumpers now. Go talk to your professor. Maybe talk to your advisor. What's that class like? But you're not taking the ball and ultimately holding it away from the hole. If by chance you miss it and they go down the hole, they're not going to die. They're going to basically have to be propped back up and you get right back into it again. Now, um, with that being said, when you talk about the the role that you're going to be playing, you want to make sure that they are staying active in the classroom and also, um, you know, in these project groups or in these opportunities to do engagement. Over the years, um, when I when I speak to students and seeing who wants to kind of get more active with their resumes, they often think about internships. So if you go out to the blog, I have some tips you can download on how and what you should do as far as getting a good solid internship. But more importantly, going back to the engagement piece, um, I've seen students kind of overextend themselves. So I wanna share with you one story that I think kind of puts a, a light on it. Some, some people feel that, well, engagement means they're a job. Well, okay. Um, one, one day I had, um, I was working with some students in a lab and I had this other student come up to me. He was a junior. He was a rising star. He was really sharp, very sharp. He was going to go places. There's no doubt about it. And he said, you know, Mr. Fred, I want to, I want to drop this. I want to drop, uh, I'm going to drop out and immediately stop what I was doing with these other students. I said, no, 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 let's, let's go talk about this. So we walked and we talked, we grabbed a coffee and we walked around the campus and I said, what's going on? He goes, well, you know, I'm working part time and I'm, I'm also, you know, struggling with these 16 or 17 credits of coursework. Um, I, I can't do it anymore. I said, You're, so I'm thinking to myself part time. I'm thinking 1987. So for me, part time always meant 12 to 15 hours. Well, I, I begin to talk to him and I find out, well, he's working 38 hours. So that's a lot of hours, right? Well, since 2008, when the mortgage uh, the whole mortgage system collapsed. I've seen a lot of students working and also helping their parents pay for their mortgages, lost jobs and so on. Well, I thought, well, what's going on? Are you helping out your parents or are they, or what are, you know, are you trying to pay for school? Oh no, no, no. My parents are loaded. I don't have a problem. I don't have any problem financially. Okay. So, you know, I looked at him, I said, is it, is it gambling? Is it something else? And he said, no, no, no. I said, well, what's the problem? He goes, well, I have a car payment. You have a car payment. So when I asked him, now this was a few years ago, his car payment was in excess of $450 a month as a college junior. And I looked at him, I'm like immediately thinking to myself, why are you paying over $450 as a college junior? You know, that's going to all come in time. And he looked at me and he said, well, it's all about the girls. The girls love having a new car. Oh, and I, I looked at him, I said, well, the girls are going to love it when you can't take them on vacation because you're too busy either folding shirts at the Gap or flipping burgers at Burger King because you're not going to have a job and you're not going to have a degree. Okay, so, or not have a career and a degree. So it, there's, a, there's this, this attitude of what is engagement because they're so busy with everything else in life that they can't get involved at their university. And what they're losing sight of, and this as a parent, pinballing them, ask them to get involved, ask them to get engaged, um, work alongside of a professor, get your name on a publication, uh, go to a conference, that all builds your resume so that when that employer is looking at you either as an intern or as a potential job hire, they're saying you're a rock star, not a rock. And that's what it's all about. So the four tips, get them a book. Like I said, leave that little note in the, in the inside flap, leave it on, the, on their bed. Um, also, uh, re relax, breathe and let go. It's time. And, and the nice thing about universities, one last thing I'll say about that, it's a sandbox. It's designed for students to fail and lift up. Not everything should be an A, okay? And they're gonna, they're gonna learn that. The third thing is also to stop the quizzing, okay? That's our job. Remember those smart questions just to feel the edges? 
pinballing them back in to talk to the professor. That's all you got to say. Plant that seed, plant that seed, right? And then ultimately, engagement, getting involved. That is one of the keys to succeeding in higher education. And that's the thing that also differentiates it from watching everything on YouTube. Um, you know, it, you, I will say this about YouTube and the online education world that I'm fully involved with. Um, it's always nice when you have a professor on top of you holding you accountable. Uh, YouTube doesn't hold you accountable. Udemy doesn't hold you accountable. Udacity doesn't hold you accountable. How many classes, if you're an adult listening to this, how many times have you taken a class online that you haven't even finished? Okay, so some things to think about. All right, so I took enough time. I said I would try to keep this to 30 minutes. I'm at 25 minutes now, and I wanna thank everybody, like I said, popping in and popping out there. And as always, please share this out with any parent that you think that this might benefit um, them hearing this message. It's something that I love to get out there and I will always entertain a conversation, an email, even a phone call if they wanna talk more. I do have other tips and also if you go out to the www.getmecoding.com blog, you'll be able to download these tips and if you want, you could email them out to your friends or your family and, and hey, hey, just use one of the tips, or use all four, whatever you think is, is good to go, but that's all I have. So I wanna thank everybody, it's Saturday, enjoy your weekend and uh, we'll see you all online, everybody. See you.